Okay, everybody, we are back for part two of this video on the solar setup here in our travel trailer. It's not even a travel trailer, cargo trailer. So that's what we're going to do today is the second part of that, which is hooking everything up. In the last video, if you've seen that, we installed the flexible solar panels on the roof, ran all the cables inside. That's what we got here running in. And now we're just going to do all the hookups inside. There's a bunch of different things that we're going to need for this. I don't have them spread out or nothing, but I'll show you them as we use them each item that we got and then i'll get a picture of them later of them all spread out so you guys can see and i'll leave links to it all down below if you guys are interested in it um we also need to make a box or something to hold our batteries underneath the bench because we're going to put it underneath here on another board and we're going to mount that board but we need a little box for our batteries so our batteries won't slide around and then something to cover the top so it protects the contact points on top from anything touching it you don't want that so that's what we're going to do right now we're going to cut the board that we need to put our stuff on and then we're going to mount everything on it if you come over here, you can see this is uh, my crew drawing of the solar setup. We're going to have our 40 amp charge controller over here. We're going to have the 100 or 1100 watt power inverter right here. We'll probably end up changing that, but that's the one we have right now. We're going to put the fuse block here. We're also going to have the fuse here. We're going to have a 50 amp circuit breaker over here to protect everything in line. We're also going to have this upper, uh, surge protect or actually a breaker fuse on the uh, positive side of the battery cable also and then uh of course all the different size cabling you need for different size see i have a mark six six gauge four gauge two gauge for each part of this leg i got the 10 gauge coming from the panels four coming from the block feeding that so that's going to be all good well we are using the lithium iron phosphate batteries and we want to give a big shout out to unix for sponsoring this video and supplying those batteries that's what we're going to use for our system they're going to go under there like we mentioned and that'll give us all the power we need for what we plan to do in here so that being said let's get this piece of wood cut that we're going to put uh all our stuff on all right we got our piece measured out where we want to put it make sure you measure your biggest piece you're going to put on here to make sure you have enough room for everything our biggest piece will probably be our power inverter for the one we currently have which is at 1100 watts so we're going to cut this off so we can mount everything to here right on the bench make everything easy don't forget your eye protection of some sort. There's our piece, all nice and cut, ready to go. We're gonna mount everything right on here. And then we can mount this underneath the bench on the wall. It'll be perfect. So let's get in there and do that. All right, guys, this is all we're going to need. It's spread out here on the bench. It looks like a lot, but it's it's not really. The first thing we're going to need is our charge controller. This is a Renergy 40 amp charge controller, which is more than we need for what we currently have, but it is scalable. That was the whole point of the system. And we also have the Bluetooth controller so we can download the app and check out the stuff for that. We're going to need a couple of tools we didn't have. This is the crimping tool, the hammer lug crimper. This is the one you hit with a hammer to crimp your lugs. And this is going to be the, what is this one? Let's check it out. Oh, this is the cable cutter. So we can cut the cables for this. Next, we got our, this is our fuse. And we also have the mega, this is for the mega fuse, 150 amp for that. We got a couple of those. Our circuit breaker that we're going to put in line there, you've seen on our chart. You're going to need various cables. You're going to need the ones for your batteries. That's going to go from your battery to your, all your stuff hooked up and also to join your two batteries together. That's what these part of these will be. Uh, these are the lugs that we're going to be using. These are also the jumper cable to join the two batteries. The lugs that we're going to need because we got to make we're probably cut some of these to make them to the length we want. So we're going to have to cut these. Uh, this is our fuse panel we're going to use. This is the Blue Sea Systems. This is probably the best one you can get for the job. That'll have more than enough ports for what we need. Uh, this is also part of the cable set. This is for the inverter. You can see that on there. And this is the inverter we have right now. We, are, we already had this one, so we're going to be getting another one that's a little bigger, that's pure sine wave. But for what we're doing right now, for the sake of this video, this will be what we need. So this is pretty much our layout of what we're going to mount to that board. Um, and like I said, you can look at the paper again. Everything I just mentioned is here. We're just going to get all these cables and everything hooked up on the board so it looks neat. And then we can just mount it to the wall and see if we got power. So let's mount this all to the board and get going. All right, guys, we kind of got our system laid out here on the board. We want to make it as neat as possible so we got short runs for the cables so we don't have any loss. Uh, right here, we have the fuse block. It's going to go over here to our 
our fuse and then it goes over then we're going to have some one that goes to our power inverter and then that's going to connect to the the Renergy charge controller then it's going to go to the circuit breaker and all that so it's going to be a cool setup right now we're going to try to get our cables ran see what we need for that and uh, what sizes we need because we're going to have to cut the cables we bought and make them the length we want to make this system optimal so let's get our cables busted out and see what lengths we need here all right we have it out, laid out i think the way we want it so we mounted this down this fuse block and we mounted this fuse down the first connection we got to make we're using four gauge wire is from our fuse block to the fuse so this cable is too long we knew that that's why we bought the other ends we're going to cut this to the size we need and make it as short as possible so we could see then we need to cut about here we're going to use the tool for that but remember you're going to have your your uh, lug on there so you want to make sure it, it works with the lug so we'll grab our lug over here they are somewhere these are our lugs we'll get the one the right size we need for the gate four gauge wire you're not sure what size you're gonna need buy a bunch and then you can return what you don't use but right here these are gonna be let's see it'll tell you on here what they're gonna be used for four gauge wire so we know it's probably gonna be these ones right here you guys can see that so we're gonna cut this this is gonna go like this we're having our wire just do one of these try to make it neat it's gonna go on there so we know we need to cut our wire get a marker we know we need to cut the wire here and we need to trim it back to here so we're gonna cut the wire at this line and we're going to trim the sheathing back to here so it fits in that perfectly so let's do that first we're gonna cut it that's what these cutters were for nice clean cut there and then you'll have leftover pieces because you're gonna have to join from here to here so you'll need this also and then we have our other line we're gonna cut that back you can buy strippers for these like wire stripper um, I'm just going to use a utility knife. Just take it easy. You don't cut the wires underneath. So one of these. Just score it all the way around. You'll see it where you started to break through. So if you guys can see that. So that that's so we don't mess the wires up underneath. If you have to cut it in another spot, you can. Just be careful. key is not to lose any of those strands of wire there we go so we have that nicely cut back we can put our lug on there we're going to put a heat shrink tube on here to protect the ends and also once we crimp that that'll be protected there so let me get the crimping tools out and then we'll be ready to crimp this on all right we got our we got our cable end on there we got our heat shrink tube on don't forget to put those on then we're going to put it here in our crimping tool. We have the hammer type. We got to make sure we get it placed in there right. Like that. And then you're just going to hammer the top. You'll hear the sound change when it gets solid. You can see we got a nice tight crimp right there. And then we just put our heat shrink tube over it. We're going to use our micro torch. We'll shrink these ends. You don't want to go too far up because you don't want to cover that hole or mess with the contact points. And there we have it. One of our cables are made. Now we get to just go through and do this to the other ones the exact same way. You're just going to get your cables to the length you need. Make sure you have them length. Put your heat shrink tube on crimp them and you're all set there are other crimping tools you could use they got one that goes in a bench vise they got ones that go on a drill but for the money this is cheap easy to use so we like it so we'll just go on and do the other cables and get this thing hooked up okay for our second leg of this we're going to do 
we got to do positive on the same side of this fuse and go over to the positive on our power inverter. So then the power is going to go from this side of the fuse down to the battery. So when you're making your cable for this, try to find a nice route and be mindful of when you're putting the lug on how it should go. Because like this one, we're going to want this one this, this way sideways and this one's flat. That way it just sits better. If you had it like this, you'd be twisting wires. So try to get it in position. We already cut it and trimmed it. Then we did a small marker line so we know where we need to do it. We're going to crimp that and heat shrink it just like we did the other one and hook that up. Then we're going to go to some of the negative sides, like to the top of the fuse block. It's going to be negative. And then we're going to swing it around and stuff like that. So we'll get that going and then we'll get back with you. Okay, guys, we have our positives hooked up from the fuse block to this, this fuse, from this fuse into the positive side of our inverter. Now we got to take one more positive from the positive side of the inverter to one side of this circuit breaker over here, which will be this side here, because the other side is going to go up to our, our charge controller. So we're going to hook up positive from here to here, and that's also going to be with 4-gauge wire, the same wire. Then we can reduce it. We'll be going down the 6-gauge when we go from here to here. So right now we're just going to hook the 4 over to here to here. Same thing we did on the last one. You're just going to see how you need to mount that. Feed that around. You know, however you're going to, whatever way makes it neat for you. Probably something like, remember, this has a cover that goes on here with one outlet. So if you can get them to go to the same way, it's going to cover it like that. It would be better, but if not, you're, you're going to be able to cover it otherwise. Because if I had one come off here like that, it's, it's kind of, kind of funny. So I'm just going to do it one of these routes, like the quickest route over here without getting in the way of anything. I don't have this mounted down yet, but something like that's gonna work for us. That way this will lay flat up against the lug. You don't want any space. You want as much contact on here as possible. And then of course we're gonna join to this one. We already have this screwed down. These are screwed. So the only thing we have screwed down are these three right now. But this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut, put the, the lug on there the same way we've been doing all these. You just continue on with all your positives. So right now it'll be this positive right now. So let me get this one cut and put it in place. And then we'll go on to what, what leg we're going to do next. We're trying to do all the positives. Then we'll go to the negatives. Um, you're also going to have that one positive coming off of here, which I marked on the board, which is going to shoot to your battery. And then you're going to have the one come off the negative side of here, which is going to go down to your battery. So let's get this one hooked up and we can uh, go on to the next one. Okay. We have this positive, this positive, this positive now we're going down to the positive from the other part of the surge uh circuit protector over to our charge controller and now we're down in the size of wire this is all all size for my setup by no means am i an expert at this i did a lot of research online uh, there's a good resource uh will prouse his youtube channel he's very good at this stuff he give you a lot of information off of there that's where I got a lot of my information. But we went from the four gauge. Now we're going down to the six gauge because it's protected. We're going to go from this side into the battery positive of your charge controller. So again, the same thing. Measure your distance you got. What's going to work for you to make, to make it the shortest distance. So you can see for here, we want to shoot it into there. So we're, we got about one of these numbers here. We're just going to cut it there. And then you can see, once we strip it back, it will fit in there nicely. And that, that one will be done on the positive side of it. Then we're going to go from the positive side, and we'll start doing some of the negatives. Uh, the way we had to do this, our cover is not going to fit on here unless we cut another notch out of this side, which we might do. It gives us a little more protection. So we'll cut a little notch out for that cable. But other than that, that's good. So let's get this stripped back. We're going to put it in the battery positive of our charge controller right here. Remember, our, our, our circuit protector is off, so it's no power would go through that because uh, you never want to hook your solar panels into this before you hook your battery. You want your batteries first, make sure everything turns on and does everything. Your solar panels should be last. So that's what we're going to do, strip this back. We're going to put it in there. Then it'll be something like that. Uh, this is the only thing not mounted at this point. We mounted everything else. We just got to finish mounting this item here, and then we're running everything into it. That'll be our positives. 
then we're going to start with all the negative stuff. So let's give it that. All right, we have all our positives hooked up on this side of this setup. Next, we're going to start going from the negatives. We're going to go from the negative side of this fuse panel or this fuse block over to the negative side of our power inverter. That's our first one we're going to do. And then from the negative side of this, we're going to hop over to the negative battery on the charge controller. So we're going to be hooking from here to here, from here to here. That's where the negatives are going to go. And then you're going to have a negative that goes from the negative side of here down to your battery. So your positive to your battery is here, your negative to your battery is here. They're going to come off of here. And at the end of your positive for your battery, you're going to have another one of those, another one of those inline fuses at the battery end, right at the battery. So you're really protected. Don't forget to put your fuse into your holder. That is in now. We're just going to, we're not, nothing's tight yet. We'll tighten it all down once everything's mounted though, but we'll tighten this all down. Um, when we get to everything in there, remember, this is not a how to, this is how I did it. I'm not a professional. Again, this is just from all my research. This seems like a good setup for me. That's scalable. I can always increase the size up to like 580 Watts. If I wanted, let's just say 500 to be safe with this charge controller and I should be good with that. So let's keep going. Let's get this negative battery cable made. It goes to here. Same thing as we did with the positive ones, measure your length and then cut it, put your end on and you're cooking with butter. So let's get rolling on that one. Same thing. This one's going to be the six gauge wire from here to here, or excuse me, four gauge from here to here will be the four gauge. You can see it's going to go from here. We'll run it under under here probably trying to make this as neat as possible and then we'll bring it up and hook it into there this way it runs and it runs neat it doesn't look all like a jumbled mess but that's what we're going to do i mean this one's we almost might not even have to cut this one if we didn't want to we're not saving that much if we just we're saving like an inch inch and a half so we might be able to just keep it like that we'll see we just want it really neat like i said so well, let's get that mounted and go. And remember here, you got such a small lug on this fuse panel. It's such a big hole in here. Ideally, you would want to change it out to something like this, which I might do. It gives us a little smaller hole that fits on here better. That way there's not so much play. You got such a big hole here. So I'll probably switch out to the smaller lug. These are ginormous, uh, but it will be good on this end. So I'll use one end for here and then I'll cut one end for here just to make it neat, better fit. And on here, you can have your, your cables can come out of the side or the top. So that works pretty good on this one. But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut this off, put this lug on this one. That way it'll fit this better. And then this one will be good for here. So let me do that. And then I'll come back and show you that part. All right, we got our first negative cable on here. It goes to the negative side of our fuse panel to the negative side of our power inverter. Now our second one is gonna be from the negative side of the power inverter into the battery negative on your charge controller. That's gonna be right next to your red one there. You'll see it labeled battery, battery minus. So again, we're gonna cut our cable to length, trying to make this as neat as possible. So it'll go in here. So we're gonna kind of judge a length here. We're gonna say right here. And this is the six gauge wire. This is now we're going down in size a little bit. So six gauge over to here. That's what we're going to do with this one. We don't have to put an end on here since it's just going in and it gets tightened in with the screw. So we'll loosen that up, get it ready. Like I mentioned, they do have strippers to strip these, the sheathing off here. I had one. It didn't, to me, it didn't work that great. So I'm doing it by hand. Just don't want to cut any of the strands of wire. And you can see, see if I got you guys close enough. You can see, you can get through without getting there. And then you don't lose any strands. And then again, we're just going to shove that up into that, into this part. Here we go. We'll tighten that down. Again, remember battery, uh, your solar panels is the last thing you want to plug into this. Always want to test for power first. So here we are, we have the negative to here. 
and we're going to have one more negative that's going to go on here it's going to be the one that goes to the battery so that's going to be our last negative for there so that one's done we do have our cables for the battery these are two gauge these are big mambo jambos sorry probably loud for you guys these are big mambo jambos these are one negative goes from here one positive goes from here don't forget your fuse on the end of there i'll show you that when we get to that but i'm going to tighten all the stuff we have so far up and then uh, i'm going to get the negative mounted to here so it can follow down to go to the battery uh we'll probably i will probably end up cutting some of the length of this when it's under there because we don't need it this long and we want to we don't want to have any loss with long cables so we'll be cutting some of these down because these are how long did i get i don't know i think they're three feet long or something so we'll probably be cutting those about in half but uh let me get this tightened up then we'll get that black cable ran positive ran i'll show you the fuse on the other end so you guys can hook that up but right now we have the positive and negative hooked up here in our charge controller or yeah charge controller everything's hooked up here we're going to tighten it all down our fuse is in here we didn't tighten this because we're going to still hook our positive to this so we'll tighten all this stuff down that's what i'm going to do right now so make sure you go through make sure you got it where you want it tighten it down i did already cut the end of this cap out so when i put it on here it'll go on here and still protect the end of it like that and not uh, leave that exposed so that's going to work pretty good so let's go and finish that up all right guys we got everything tightened the protective caps on we have all we have the battery cables ran we don't have them cut to size yet oops sorry there with the mic we don't have them cut to size yet but we're going to be cutting these off putting new ones on and like i said we're going to be putting that inline 150 amp fuse we'll be connecting it to there you want it as flat as possible so don't use any washers if you can help it just a, a bolt and a nut to hold that together and then uh, but first we're going to take this underneath the bench we're going to mount this board underneath there see where we want it placed then we'll bust out our batteries we'll set them under there we're going to hook those up together and then we'll hook the positive and negative to each one of those and we'll be good to go so let me get this thing mounted underneath the bench i'll try to get you guys a view underneath there to see so you guys can see what it looks like under there and then uh we got to leave a little room up here for plugs because this this is where the plugs are um i'll probably run a maybe a small power strip off here a three three section power strip maybe but i won't be plugging stuff in here too much because a lot of it's gonna be run off the 12 volt but uh that's what we got so far so let me get this underneath there and see what, what it looks like all right we are under our bench here this is where we want to set it so we're going to set it something like this that way we have ample space for a plug out of here and our batteries fit under there good so we got two screws in it for now we'll put the other two down here that should hold that up for us let me get two more i don't like the way that looks screw behind there that'd be some that'd be awesome i don't know we are pushing into something but anyway it is mounted it's looking good let's get our battery busted out we'll set those down here i'm still gonna have to make a tray for them but for the length of this video we'll probably just set them there for now then i'll make some kind of little box tray so they can't slide around we'll bolt it to the floor screw it to the wall there and put some kind of cover over them so nothing can fall on them and spark it out you don't want that so let me go grab those batteries we'll set those up all right we got our battery up here if you guys aren't familiar with uniwix we have used them in the past for projects we did uh, a lithium conversion on our rv uh uniwix hooked us up with those batteries also we did saw a bunch of tests on these run times and then they out they all exceeded what they're rated they have a bunch of the high-end features and a, a decent size 
or a decent priced battery. Of course, thing with the lithium, they're lightweight. You gotta love the lightweight batteries. And we do have two of these. You can see they are lightweight. I think they only weigh 26 pounds a piece. These things are awesome. And you have your uh, your spots right there, your positive and your negative. Uh, being the lightweight and that they are the 100 amp, amp hour batteries, between two of these, that'll be more than enough for what we're using this for. Cannot complain at all. And it does come with the caps to protect the tops and the screws to put your cables down. So we already have those and we don't have to worry about too much with the top with anything touching it and like shorten it out. So we're going to get the other one of these open too. If you guys are interested in Uniwix, these lithium batteries, like I said, they do really well. We've been using them now for quite a while and they work really good. If you haven't seen the videos we did on testing these, I will leave a link to it down below so you guys can uh, check that out. They are pretty good batteries. So let me bust out the other one. We're also going to have to be hooking up our Bluetooth controller for the Renji uh, solar controller. That's just so we can get on our app and uh, check out the status of everything, see how everything's working. That just plugs right into, right into the charge controller. And it also came with a temp probe. There is a spot for the temp probe. Um, I don't believe we have to worry about it too much with our lithium batteries, but um, if you have the lead acids, you might want to put this kind of on your cable that goes to the battery so you can monitor your, your battery temperature. But these have the you know, over temp shutoffs and everything built in. So we're probably not gonna need that, but we will hook this up and get our, our solar or our app set up. But uh, that'll be easy. We're gonna mount that on the board too, plug it in. But uh, we're gonna get these batteries set up down below, put the cables on, and then we will hook power to our, you know, flip the breakers, get power going, see if our charge controller lights up. So well, that's what we're going, opening up the next one. All right, guys, this is what we got so far. We got this over. We had to move it over a little so our solar cables coming in here would reach. Now they reach perfectly. And then we got our battery set up down here. They'll be in a box of some sort. But uh, what we're going to do is cut our cables that come out of here and this one down to length. Then we're going to use what's left of those to join these batteries in parallel. And parallel means that they're going to still be 12 volt. They're going to share across each other. And then we'll hook the black on the black coming off of there to the negative on that side and the positive. To the positive on that side but we're going to join them in parallel first so let's cut these to length use the other pieces of these to join our batteries in parallel and we'll have that part hooked up then we can flip breakers and make sure this is turning on we do you can see we have the bluetooth controller right there i'm probably going to put that higher up in the trailer here so i'll remove that and put it probably somewhere up there somewhere but for now just for the sake of this i'm going to put it right there and that plugs right in the bottom you'll see the port it's marked for it you just plug that in that port uh, and then that'll that'll be ready to go you download the app and then you can see everything from your phone but i'm going to get these cut to size and then we'll be ready to go all right guys we cut these cables to length we did them so they will go like this to give those room to move the batteries if we want we put the new lugs on the bottom and we heat shrinked them then we took a piece of the cable that was left over we made our cables our jumper cables for to make this battery go parallel so it's going to go positive to positive like that then you'll have the negative which will go negative to negative there remember on your positive that you have coming down from up top at your thing you want to put your your fuse in line so we're just going to bolt that here Let's see if you guys can see that we're going to bolt it in right here i'm just going to use these flat washers we're going to bring it up through or put it down through it don't matter we're going to put a flat washer and a lock nut on the back. Just like that. Then we'll tighten that up really good. And then this is the part you're going to connect to the positive side over there of the battery. That way there's a fuse there. There's a fuse as it goes up in. It'll be fused up there as well. And then everything's protected there. And you also got the breaker, which is protecting your charge controller so that's what we're going to do we're going to go down here and hook our battery cables up uh, and do our parallel ones first then we'll go hooking these up when you hook the positive up you're going to see a little spark that's normal that's the because your the capacitors in your charge or your uh, power inverter are going to be powering up so you might see a little spark that is okay 
But like I said, nothing's hooked into the charge controller yet. We didn't, we didn't hook in any, none of these uh, things from the solar panel yet. We want to put the battery into here first. Oh, first things first. Yes. So we want to get the battery hooked into there first, make sure this powers up and reads what it's supposed to. And then we'll, we'll know we can hook in the solar panel. But first, let's get these batteries hooked up. All right, guys, we're on our last step. We're hooking up the positive that goes up to the fuse. We'll see if we see that spark. Let me move you guys closer. As we hook this in. You guys see that all right? All right, right here. We're going to hook this one up. And then, yep, you see that little spark there? You will get that as it charges your, like I said, your power inverter. It's going to power out the capacitors in there. It will give you a little spark. That's tight. And make sure all my connections are tight. And that is tight. As you can see, we have our 150 amp fuse in line. It comes up. Let's get you guys a fuller view here if I can. It comes up. You can see the positive goes into this fuse, which goes into our panel. It's feeding that and it's feeding our power inverter. And it's coming out of the power inverter over to the circuit breaker and then up into our charge controller. We have the breaker off right now. That's why there's nothing on up here. And then our negative comes up, goes into the power inverter. It goes out of the power, power inverter over to the fuse panel. And then you got a negative that also comes up into the battery negative side of your charge controller. Um, we're going we're gonna to be flipping that breaker here in a minute. We want to see what comes up on our panel. But I think first I'm going to route this where I want it. So I got all the cables looking neat. And then I'll do that. So bear with me for a moment. I'll put you guys on pause. I'm going to hook that Bluetooth dongle up a little higher. And then uh, we'll get it plugged in. And then we'll see what we bring up here on the screen. So first time we charge, bring, put it, turn it on, you guys will be here to see it. So we'll be just going flip. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Hopefully we did it all right, right? All right, guys. I have this the Bluetooth dongle hooked up where I want it. I'll put some zip ties around some of the wires. Now I'm going to flip this breaker. Get you guys back here a little bit. I'm going to flip this breaker and this should come on. So it did come on. The lights are all good. We're showing 13.1. Can you guys see that? 13.1 on there. So it powered on as it was supposed to. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Now what we're going to do is power that off, hook in our solar our uh, solar panels into that unit, and then it should work pretty good. Then we'll see if we're getting, what kind of charge we're getting off our panels up there. Remember, we only have 200, 200 watts of solar up there on the roof. Uh, we can extend it more later, but for what we're doing, this is going to work out great. You can see it's on 12 volt over here. I, I'm trying to read that. I can't read that, but hopefully it read the kind of batteries we have. I'll check in the app. It's easier to see and set up, so... Like I said, I'm going to shut this off now, and I'm going to hook up the solar panels in there. We're going to take the negative, put it to the negative one, and the positive will hook up and put in the positive side. Then the solar panels are hooked up. Everything's going, and we'll see what this says again. So I'll hook those up, then I'll turn you guys back on so you can see what it shows with the solar. All right, guys, we got, them, we got the solar panels plugged in. You can see that. Let me flip this breaker. I believe it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. I'm not sure. It looks like it is. But oh, there it goes. Our solar panel light came on. So it's showing that solar. You can see the arrow. It's showing that solar is going into the battery and charging it right now. So the sun is. The sun is taking care of our batteries charging our batteries up now we're going to go over to the app and see what the app's all about and see what uh it'll show us you know what it's doing all the current stuff about it so let's get up here and take a look at the app all right guys here is the app um if you go in you it'll ask you you know to connect to your device you just press that plus add device and it'll find your device you click on that and you're in 
Uh, if you need to change any settings, like we needed to, to change our battery type, if you go over here to settings, it says we change it to lithium iron phosphate, but it was standard on a sealed lead acid. You just go into the plus symbol up here. You go to administrator, because you have to do everything through administrator. And then you put in the default password, and then then it'll let you change this to let the see if I click this, I want to change it to lead acid. It's lead acid, but or excuse me, lithium iron. But if I wanted to change it to lead acid, I just click that, click any other one like that, and it would change it for me. But because that's because I already logged in as administrator. But it might ask you for a password. You can also go under the plus symbol and change password. That bottom option it allows you to change your password to whatever you want it to be away from the default. You could search the default password for this app, or I'll leave it in the uh, I'll leave it in the description down below the default password for this app, and then make sure you change it though. And this tells you our charge profile here. If you wanted to change any of that, this is pretty much the default for the lead ass or the lithium iron. And the monitoring, I haven't found a way to change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit, so I think it's stuck in Celsius. It tells you what our voltage is, what our charge power is, current, and the voltage. I'm not 100% sure on these. Charge power says 107 watts. I had 111. It's, is that just what it's charging? Considering I have 200 watts of solar up there, is that supposed to read higher? I'm not sure. Anybody know? Let me, let me know down below. Uh, but that's what we have. We have nothing under the load section of that controller. Um, and I, I just plugged in the temp sensor. It's just ambiently sitting there for ambient temperature. And then uh, for capacity, the battery is 100% because they're fully charged lead acid pretty nice setup here and then you can go to your record it'll it'll show you what in the last like you know so many days or something all that was happening right here you can go down through all that so you can see all that and you can pick the different days if you want obviously we don't have that many days and then back to monitoring and then in settings like I said if you needed to change it if your system was 24 you can change that up there you can see that and then all this other stuff you can change here like I said I was looking for temperature stuff here temperature compensation I that's not what we're looking for but whenever you make a change though like say you change your battery type make sure you put set and it'll send that to your controller and make sure it's changed in the controller because when I first tried it it set it here but my controller still said different so right now it is doing what it's supposed to do monitoring everything for us easy to log into so that's the app, fellas. If you have any questions about that, let me know. I'll see if I can find them if I don't know them. Action. Action. All right, guys. There you go. There you have it. That's our solar project for the cargo trailer. We're definitely going to upgrade the power inverter. Uh, it's not the best. We were like a pure sine wave, but that's what we had for this so far. So that's what we used. Um, if you guys have questions about anything we used or where we got it, we'll leave links to it down below. Any questions, hit us up down below also. We'll get back to them. Um, I'll leave a, I know it's a crude drawing, but it kind of gives you a reference of how to lay it out a little bit. And then you do it on a piece, you do it on your board like we did. And then you just follow your diagram so you know where to put everything and use the right gauge wires and all this and that. Um, there's a couple tools you'll need. You'll need that crimping tool. You'll need the cutters and probably a stripper for the shielding. We didn't use that. We just used a utility knife. It saves us 30 some dollars. So <laughs> that's a bonus. Now again, a big shout out to Uniwix. For sending us the Defender batteries, the lithium iron phosphate batteries. They are awesome batteries, lightweight, work great, put out a lot of power. Can't ask for better than that. Like I was saying before, this is more of a how I did it, not a how to. I'm not an expert by no means. I just did a little bunch of research on what I wanted and how to hook it up. Uh, a good resource for that is Will Prouse on YouTube. He has a nice channel that kind of lays out a lot of this stuff. He's good at this stuff. Plus, he has a website with some packages. It can gives you in the right direction on what to buy if you wanted a bigger package or maybe a smaller package but he, he's got a lot of resources there that are good for you um that's where i got a lot of mine from so that was great so i want to thank you guys for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe button the thumbs up so you know when we hit a button we'd like to get to 100,000 subscribers i know we're a ways off but with your guys' help maybe we can get there if you're feeling if you're feeling great felt this helped you it was entertaining at all just hit that thumbs up button subscribe please and that bell notification. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Try something new.
spoken.